<sighs> oh, excuse me. Oh. Oh. Chicken. Mm. Umami. Mm. Can you smell that? Oh, I don't think you can smell that because you're on camera. Yeah. Uh, this is the olfactory and gustatory section of the specialized senses where we have smell and taste is what we'll be focusing on today. And of course, they are connected. So olfactory receptors are chemoreceptors. They respond to chemicals. Those chemicals must dissolve into liquids, which is why we have snot. Uh, as you breathe those chemicals, they go into the liquid. Within the snot, the mucus, they bind to the olfactory receptors. Uh, these re receptors uh, are, have some uh, supporting epithelial cells, as you know, and they're found on the top of your nose, okay, the superior nasal conche. That's the top, and also the nasal septum. And then in the nasal cavity themselves, there's also uh, olfactory receptors. And you can see those here. Here you have the different uh, receptors where the chemicals will bind to, the yellow portion. Uh, and I've drawn a little line there for you so you can see them entering. You also get smells that come up from the food, of course, to bind to those receptors. And then they'll make their way through the olfactory bulb. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and you may have seen the olfactory bulb when we did the uh, sheep brain dissection. You saw the two protrusions out in the front, uh, just underneath, or inferior to the... Uh, frontal lobe, those were the olfactory bulbs, and those will run back into the brain. So from the olfactory nerves through the bulbs, uh, and then to the tracts in the middle of the brain, um, in the midbrain, and then up through the uh, limbic system, where it ties to emotions. Smell is the most uh, strongly connected to emotions. And then off to the olfactory cortex for interpretation. Uh, so there, it's important that these receptors are high up in your nose so that as you inhale air, you can undergo sensory adaptation really quickly um, so that when you're in class and Kaylin is sitting next to you and she farts, uh, it may smell bad for one or two seconds, a little while, but then within that short period of time, you get a 50% or more sensory adaptation so it doesn't smell so bad anymore and you can uh, continue about your day. Um, and also so that as smells are coming in through your nose, you don't constantly, you're not constantly bombarded with the very smells uh, that you're taking in because the receptors are above the typical pathway of air that comes in. Now, what makes one smell different from another? What makes a fart smell different from an orange? Or I guess sometimes they smell the same. Uh, the hypothesis is called the olfactory code, and that means that there's a distinct set of receptors of the thousands or millions that different chemicals bind to, and that creates a pattern, and each one of those sends a, an impulse through the uh, olfactory bulb, and that pattern creates a characteristic smell that you learn as you get older. Um, and each pattern uh, creates a slightly altered or different smell based on which uh, receptors the smell binds to, or the different chemicals uh, bind to. That's the olfactory code. It's a hypothesis. There's no other logical one. On to taste. Taste buds are the things that actually taste. They're found in the papilla of your tongue. Papilla are more complex than just the actual taste buds themselves. We'll, we'll show you in a second. Uh, they're found on the roof of your mouth. Yes, you can taste on the roof of your mouth. If you put salt up to the roof of your mouth, uh, if you want to run to the kitchen and grab some and try it right now, you can actually taste the salt. Uh, also, the linings of your cheeks and the walls of your pharynx down in the back of your throat. Uh, the back of your mouth or throat is uh, your pharynx. Now, these taste receptors found within the papilla are chemoreceptors again. Uh, they are actually modified epithelial cells that function as receptors. And attached are these little teeny tiny hairs that protrude out, and the chemicals bind to those hairs and make their way to uh, the chemoreceptors to uh, trigger or activate those specific receptors. Now, here you see one papilla there, and the taste bud's shown within. Here we have a taste bud. Within you have the taste hair right on the surface of this taste cell, uh, and this taste cell is attached with the sensory neuron down to the nerve fibers uh, that will take it off to the brain. Uh, so this is one papilla. So, of course, if you have many, many papilla, uh, you will have a more a, a stronger sensation or perception of that taste in a way. Um, and you'll see when we do our taste lab that it's, uh, it can be fairly complicated as to uh, the location of taste. It's fairly standard to say that different regions of your tongue uh, taste different tastes more strongly, so salt versus sweet versus bitter. Um, but then there's another hypothesis that every taste bud um, has every ability or every has multiple taste cells of each type, sour, sweet, bitter, salty, uh, and umami, potentially, um, so that everywhere on your tongue can taste everything. 
Uh, and there's arguments for both sides, of course. So as we mentioned, sweet is stimulated by carbs. Uh, your saliva, of course, is the first step that breaks down the sugars, complex sugars into more simple sugars, um, which makes them sweet, and then you taste them on your tongue. Uh, there are some chemicals that bind to your sweet taste buds to trigger the sensation, but when they get into the intestines, they do not bind to receptors, and as a result, they are not taken up, and thus don't provide any calories. And these are all your um, sugar substitutes, for example, um, like NutraSweet and so on. Sour is stimulated by acids. Anything that's acidic will taste sour. Uh, anything that's salty will, t uh, like, uh, you get the point. And then bitter, there's lots of different things that uh, trigger bitter. Um, and bitter is characteristically there, evolutionarily, evolutionarily there, so that we avoid it. Uh, we often get the question, what do spicy foods activate? How is something spicy different? Well, it activates both sour receptors, so things that are spicy release a lot of hydrogen ions. They lower the pH, which makes them acidic. And not only does it activate sour, but it also activates nociceptors, so you feel the pain. Those people who like spicy foods gain pleasure from the pain. Weird, I know. I like spicy foods. Uh, now, the pathway that it goes is it goes through the cranial nerve from the tongue, from those sensory nerves, into the medulla. The medulla routes it to the thalamus. And the thalamus is going to send it along different tracks, specifically in this case to the gustatory cortex to be interpreted what, what taste that is exactly. And we're going to stop there, and we will pick it up with hearing in part three. Bye-bye.